cannabis. Definitely a hot topic. It's an amazing plant. So many molecules like cannabidiols or tetrahydrocannabinol or THC, etc. The CBD products contained within the plant are found within your own endocannabinol system. Not many plants have that. Researchers aren't even sure why we have special receptors that are waiting and ready for endocannabinols and cannabis CBDs that are found in this plant. Obviously everyone says, does it treat cancer? Do we need to take it? It used to be illegal in many places, and um, which is now legal and readily available in medicinal forms. And people are using, almost every cancer patient I know is using it. So what's, what's the lowdown? Does it really treat cancer? What's it good for? Uh, should I be on cannabis and what quality of cannabis? Uh, what dosage should I take? So let's quickly analyze this question by saying you've got cannabis that can be used medicinally for various purposes. So the molecules such as CBDs or CBNs um, are used generally to affect a mood, maybe immune system a little bit and have certain antioxidants and potentially in some cases cannabis as cancer fighting properties. And then you have the THC, which is the tetrahydrocannabinol that when it's uh, heat oxi oxidized or, or transformed through heat, it can have a very psychoactive, which makes you high or um, euphoric or can change things. So both molecules, are, all those molecules are present in various forms and some strains are higher in certain types of cannabidiols and, and THCs than others. Ultimately, it can be used to help appropriate sleep it can be used to enhance mood a little bit. It can certainly enhance appetite. Everyone knows about the munchies. Excellent for helping with pain. There you need a bit more of the THC, high THC, sort of low CBD. It can help with nausea, similarly high THC, low CBD. When you start using it medicinally for, as we said, sleep, appetite, anti-nausea, pain control, relaxing, you can also have the opposite effect with people that really feel out of control in their lives and with personalities of wanting to try and keep things controlled even though they have cancer, that sort of out of control euphoric feeling can lead to a lot of anxiety. That anxiety causes stress, stress response accelerates inflammation, acidity and various growth factors in the body, you don't want that. So yes, good medicine to use. Does it treat cancer? If I look at the millions of people using cannabis, and the percentage that have remissions when using cannabis, you're looking at an efficacy of probably less than 1-2%. to 2 When you look at studies that are done in vitro, which means in petri dishes, etc., very high doses of THC or cannabis can kill tumor cells. Excellent, interesting, more research needs to be done. Certain levels of JIC can kill cancer cells. Not that it's the same thing, but you need to appropriate it that what happens in a petri dish doesn't always happen inside the human body. And the studies have not proved that cancer is killed by cannabis. So yes, if you do find cannabis strains and you feel you want to use it for other purposes, either for very end-stage terminal cases that you need to help relax and deal with pain, or in earlier stages where treatment's causing a lot of nausea and you have discomfort, absolutely brilliant. If you're using it to fight cancer and you don't like the effect, please stop. If you're using it with a hundred other supplements, maybe it's not the most powerful supplement. Some cases it's very expensive, in other cases it's just another burden pull, another supplement that's one too many to take. Cannabis can be taken orally, it takes a long time for it to be absorbed, broken down and the effect is only four to six hours later. Really hard to know if you've taken too much or too little. Uh, you can take it rectally, there's a lot of controversy about whether it actually gets degraded more in the liver as it goes through or less and uh, no one really knows, there hasn't been enough studies. You need to use much higher doses when you use it as suppositories and can become quite expensive. You can use it in certain uh, oil format under the tongue and absorption through that. Or you can actually use it as just smoked, whether it's through an e-cigarette inhaled to pure smoke or a joint as they call it. So the effect when smoked is much quicker and much quicker in terms of pain relief and anti-nausea and things like that. So although it used to be the initial way to use it, still encourage that use if that's the kind of medicine you want to use. So people often ask me, when do you prescribe cannabis? When should we be using it? Every person has their own belief system. Everyone has certain affiliations towards different types of medicines. So no, if you're on early stage cancer, I don't think cannabis will do anything to fighting that cancer. If you are looking at it as being a possible 
near miracle cure in something where all else has failed and you want to use it late stage, by all means, it's something. We don't know what caused remission in certain cases that used it. But in general, the efficacy rate, like we said, is very, very low. Brain cancers and colorectal cancers seem to be the only ones that may be slightly susceptible to it. The other types of cancers don't seem to be at all. Controversy whether smoking cannabis actually causes lung cancer. We don't know whether it's the other constituents in the plant that cause it or the paper that wraps the cannabis itself. But yep, certain ganja smokers do have uh, high incidences of lung cancer. So I wouldn't just use it as a safe alternative to anything. I'd use it very specifically for pain, for nausea, to help sleep, to help increase appetite, and almost always in very advanced cases where you have tried everything else and nothing else is working. Make sure you find a good supplier, make sure you get the dosage right, and the thing about dosage is don't start high. Your body doesn't like something it's not used to in that sense, and you can feel very out of control. The euphoric feelings may even put you off. Start low, increase by about 30% every three or four days till you've reached the desired dosage. That's a good way to start low, build up slow, and reach a certain plateau.